what have I done? <laughs> I didn't pay attention and I didn't realize that this set of springs has direction. They all need to be this way. I guess we have things to undo here. Crisis averted. <laughs> I need to change the boots on the steering rack and install it and I think it's gonna be much easier if I install it now. So whether I like it or not, I'm gonna get crack a locking on the steering rack. Alright, so we removed the steering rack from the car in one of the previous episodes for multiple reasons. One of them is because we need to replace the tie rod ends and the boots and that was going to be much easier to be done out of the car. But also because it was in our way when we were installing the engine and the transmission in the engine bay as a unit. So when I had a little bit of time I cleaned it up already. and. Um, I'm not going to paint it because, like I said before, at some point you need to draw a line and say this is how much we're going to do here. Because if you start doing all the cosmetic things that you see in the engine bay, you're going to go to the frame and then to the whole entire car. And it's going to turn up into a ground up restoration. So we're not doing that. So I have new boots and new tire rod ends, but as it turns out here, I compared the new tie rod ends to the old ones visually and it looks like my new ones are a little bit longer than the old ones. So how I normally do it, obviously I don't have the equipment to do the alignment of the toe at the end. I need to make sure that I put the tie rod ends in the same position where the old ones are. So usually what I do is I uh, count the threads as I'm removing the old ones and I count the turns on the new ones when I put them on. And this way I ensure that I put it on the exact same location. However, since my new tie rod ends are longer, now the number of turns are going to be different. But we're going to calculate that later. Now all I need to do is count the turns as I'm removing them. And then later we're going to see what we're going to do with this information. So as it turned out here, I needed to do 21 turns to remove the left tie rod end and 22 to remove the right one. So they were pretty even. So I'm just going to write this down and we're going to continue with the rest of the steering rack. Alright, so here I think there's something wrong. This pinion and rack, I think they're super tight and they're like really jerky. Yeah, there are shims, there are two shims or even three. Or maybe four. Yeah. Anyways, it's spring and there must be more parts inside. I don't want to send it flying across the garage and I don't want to poke myself with uh, the hook. Now it moves smooth. So that's how it should be. So maybe we need to add more shims. Well, you know what? We're gonna check it now when we are reassembling it. I don't want to take the tie rods apart. I can't do nothing about them. I mean, they feel a little bit loose, but there's no play. So they should be good. So we're gonna clean up the rack as far as it is. I don't, without taking it out. And we're going to re-grease it after. Oh, 
We will take apart the pinion too. I need better of better pair of circle pliers. Oh my god. What I have here sucks. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to take this circlip out. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't take it out. I don't know why. I should be able to take it out. So I removed this part from the from the steering column. That's where it goes. And I'm gonna try to pull it with that. This goes like this, and this bolt needs to go through this groove. Let's see if. That's gonna help something, I don't know. But I'd like to take it apart, clean it, and see if we can adjust this play. Wow. Apparently there's only the circlip is what is holding it there. And now that the circlip is out, it should come out no problem. What's holding it? Don't want to lose my shims. You know what? It's time to put everything in one bin. Looks like we're taking apart the whole thing, so I don't lose anything. There's probably a five here. What's holding it? Oh my god! Yeah, it's coming out. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a little peg here that we don't want to lose. This is the peg that I'm talking about. Okay. Let's take everything apart and clean it. Okay. So this is where the shims go. So we only have one shim here? No, we have two, two shims. Okay. okay, let me go clean everything and we'll be back. You know what, as usual, one thing leads to another and <laughs> I, now I want to take the whole rack out because first of all, there's debris because you know how the boots were ripped and it obviously it's full of debris and I want to clean it properly in the first place and second, there's a bushing down there where the pinion rides it goes into that bushing and I have the feeling that that bushing is not very good but I have no way to check it but look it has a lot of play like this so I don't know I, I have to go through the rack to be able to check that bushing so you know what I'm gonna take it out I'm just gonna take the rack out I'm gonna take at least one of the tie rod out and uh, I'm gonna just measure here and I'm gonna put this nut in the same place after. So I'm gonna measure from the surface of the nut to this flat surface here, where this tapered surface here, this where it starts. So this is exactly 327. I'm gonna write this down. Okay, so now for here I don't have anything to, to replace for inside the there's a cup inside that might be worn and it needs to be re replaced but actually I don't feel any place so anyway but I don't have another tab washer for here so I have to be careful with this one 
and save it. But I need to remove at least one side so I can remove the rack completely. You see where I'm going with that? Looks like I'm gonna have to take out the other one too. We need to clean them up and grease them properly. <laughs> All right, so the rack is out, and as you saw here, I had troubles pulling it out here at the end. And also what we have here is a little burr on each end of the teeth here of the rack, where my thumbnail is catching. Yeah, I think this is where it's catching here as well. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit the burr here, very little with a file. And here we have a bushing So that's why we're having troubles here. So I believe I can file very little here, these teeth. So you see these shavings here? This is from when I tried to push it in and out after I cleaned it and it took some shavings from the bushing. So it tells me that this area here where the shavings are, this is the most damaged area. But you see now when I run the file, it got rid of the burr on each and every tooth. So let's try that again now. Mm -hmm. Now it goes in and out, no problem. Perfect. The other thing is, from here now, the bushing that we took out from here, from the bottom, I don't know if you see like that, but this bushing goes all the way at the bottom, but before that we have this cup, the end of the bushing. So this goes like this, and they go together all the way there at the bottom, and this is where the end of the pinion rides. And apparently, it actually is very good. Also, there is a spacer there, or a thrust washer, that was there as well. So that's how it went. And then the pinion. And apparently, there's no play here. So this bushing is still good. Happy about that. Let me show you how the whole assembly goes. So we have the cup, we have the bushing, then we have the thrust washer, which goes, there's a bevel here. I don't know why, but the bevel was down. Then we have the pinion. Then we have this other thrust washer, it rides like this. Then we have this bushing. Then we had four shims like that. Then we have this retainer that we had hard time taking out. And this retainer also has a O-ring inside, which we will see if we can change. So that's where the retainer goes. And then at the end, we have the circlip that holds everything together. And apparently, when this whole assembly is assembled like that, it shouldn't have any play at least according to the manual, sorry. 
at least according to the manual, there shouldn't be any play, but still the pinion should be able to spin properly. We're gonna have to test the sample with now and see how much play we have. We're gonna do that without the rack. And uh, if we need to, we're gonna have to add shims here, which I don't have. But if we have to, we're gonna make our own shims or one shim that's with the thickness of all of these because I can't make small shims like that, but I can make a thicker one. We'll see. So let's uh, temporarily assemble this and check for end play. So my main concern here is how am I gonna keep this centered as I'm pushing this bushing down because it needs to stay down. Maybe I should put them together with a little bit of grease. You think it's gonna hold it there? Or some other kind of sticky stuff? What if I do this? If I put this like this and I put it on the vise maybe? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to press it down. I'm gonna oil it a little bit at the sides because this bushing is not coming out anyways. If we change anything, we're gonna change this, the shims. So let me see if I can push it down like this. Well. Okay, that should be all the way in now. Now we're gonna assemble everything dry. So that's everything that goes at the bottom. Now we can put the pinion. And here we said now we have this other trust washer bushing. So I'm gonna put it without any shims for now. Then we're gonna put the retainer. And the circlip. There you go. So now, of course, we're gonna have play because we don't have the shims. But let's see how much this play is. So if we zero it here, okay, that's the bottom, that's the top. So we have 30, uh, 39 tau, 40 tau. 39, 40 tau of play. Okay, so the manual says that we need to add shims so we can have minimum play. So we shouldn't have any play, which is weird for me because normally they give you like two, three tau of an end play, but here it says no end play. All right, so I went and I cleaned my shims because they had a little bit of rust and it looks like they are about 10,000 each or nine. Okay. Yeah, they're 10,000 each. So it is correct that they put four shims there because we need exactly 40 tau, right? So in this case, here we are good. We're gonna assemble it later with uh, four shims. So now we can take it, take it out, assemble it with the rack and we can put our four shims and we know that our pinion is okay. Then we're gonna have to adjust the end play here on the rack as well. Okay, so we're gonna put the rack inside again dry because the grease is gonna affect our measurements. So we're putting it dry. Oops. That's the wrong side, guys. Don't tell anyone. I need to put it from the other side. <laughs> so again, we're gonna put our pinion inside the whole assembly one more time. Now it's tricky because we need to match the teeth on the... Now we need to match the teeth on the rack as well, right? Okay. Now again, our trust washer bushing. I'm even gonna put the four shims this time, even though we're gonna have to take everything apart one more time. And the circlip. Now there's no grease, that's why it's 
not doing very well but let's see now in this direction if we have any play and yes we have I can feel here uh, like a end play now that's not in the menu I'm making it up but I'm I believe that it's gonna work So, uh, obviously we have end play here, we need to bring it down to 4, uh, according to the menu, to 4 tau. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our pressure plate, I believe this is called, which goes like that. We're not going to put a spring or anything for now. Then we're going to put our cup, so this pushes on the pressure plate and we're not putting any shims here, right? So it says here to tighten this cup until there's no play here. But how do you know if there's play or no? Like you have to feel it. I can feel it now here. But let me see. Yeah. Still feel it. Let me see if I can actually see it on the gauge. If I put this inside, I can put it on the pressure plate. I have lots of play, but this doesn't see it. Um, so I guess I'm gonna go with how the menu instructs you, just tighten it until you have no play here anymore. like this. Now I don't have any play, but I guess it's going to be super tight. Now I have a little bit of play. Still have a little bit of play. Still have a little bit of play. Now I don't. So this is where it becomes super tight. Let's see if it can be seen on camera. So I'm going to loosen it again. So you see here now I have a lot of play, right? I still have it. Still have it. I still have it. I still have it. And now I don't. Now, mm, now I feel a little, a little bit of play. So I think between this point and this point is where we are. Okay. So now again, according to the menu, we should measure this gap here with filler gauges and our shims that we need to fill this gap should add up to the same gap as here plus 4 tau. So for here they tell you you need to have 4 tau of end play. So that's okay. I think that's it. That's nice and tight here pretty tight on this side it's tighter on this side <laughs> oh my god I, that's why I don't like filler gauges yeah okay let's see how much this is so this is well again 40 <laughs> 39 tau or yeah 39 40 tau so we need 44 tau shims and here these are <laughs> they actually add up to the correct amount so everything should be fine in this case so I'm assuming the burr on the teeth was what was making it jerky so in this case we can take everything apart 
lubricate it properly, put grease and everything and just assemble it. So we just reconfirmed that the amount of shims that we have is the correct amount. Good, so let's assemble it then. So one more time we're going to take everything out. Well, in this case, let's assemble everything. I'm going to put grease on this bushing here now. I'm going to put grease everywhere on the rack, especially on the teeth here. And then we can put it inside. Okay, so now we can turn it around. Now here underneath I still have the, the cup underneath, the bushing and the bottom thrust washer. Because if we don't have it there, we can't assemble it later. First I'm gonna put grease here and everywhere down there. And now we can put our pinion. Okay. And I'm going to put some more grease here. Then we have our thrust washer, our spacer, the four shims, one, two, three, four. And then our retainer, and lubricate it too. And now if you notice here, the retainer has a little tab. It needs to match a tab on the on the housing, I'll show you now. I'll move you to show you. So you see here, there's a half circle on the housing and half circle on the retainer. And that's where we put this little peg. And I'm assuming this is to prevent everything from spinning. So now I can put our circlip on top. And of course the opening on the circlip needs to be somewhere away from the peg because the peg is going to come out, right? Because you see how I put it? The circlip is right where the retainer is, where the peg is, so it might come out. So I'm going to spin it inside its groove. Okay, so now, ooh, now it moves nice and smooth. Okay. Now we're going to turn it around. We're going to put grease here inside as well. Okay, and then a little bit of grease here on the... What's it called? I don't know. I think it's called pressure plate. Goes all the way in. Now there's a spring here. And then we have the cup with, of course, our shims there, two, four, five, make sure that they're, we don't lose them, right? Okay. Come on, click. I know this is the wrong direction. I'm just trying to turn it back until it clicks. You see, that's what I do. Okay. So now eventually the shims should stop us from going down at some point at the right time, right? When we have exactly four tau in. Okay, we're not gonna over tighten it. Let's see if it still travels. Yeah, it's tight, but it travels. Let me try. Let me loosen it a little bit and see if there's difference. Yeah, even like this it's tight, but I guess that's normal. Let me try this, how easy it's gonna be. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Nice and snug, but not tight. And there's no jerkiness. Before it was like, I could feel when I was turning here before, I could feel like, I guess that was the burr on the side of the teeth was dragging somewhere. Now it is nice and smooth. Ooh, I love it. Okay, so now here, we shouldn't forget our earth trap with the little brass set screw with a star wash. 
Star Washer, Star Warsher, <laughs> Star Warsher. I don't know if that was the right direction for it, but we're gonna turn it around if we have to. I don't remember where this goes. I guess on the mounting boat here. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, so that's done. Um, now this nut here. Now we can put it the right location, which was 327 tau from here. So that's 329. So a little more right there. That's interesting. Hmm. See how little threads there are here? You see, there's very, very little threads on this side for the tie rope nut. You see, there's a lot of room here, but not enough threads. Hmm. And what about the other side? Here at the other side, we are till the end of the threads. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take some distance from here and I'm gonna add it to the other side. So, let's figure out how much. So if I tighten this a little bit more and I put it somewhere here, let's say, 176. Okay, you know what? That's where I'm gonna leave it. That's gonna be 150 tau less, right? 177 plus 150 is 327, correct. So 150 tau, we're gonna have to steal from the other side. So, yeah, looks like I didn't have to unbend the tap washer because the tap washer is to disassemble this bow joint here but I didn't need to. Anyway, um, so here there is a spring that puts pressure on the cup inside. And I guess now that we have more room here, more treads here, it's gonna push harder on this tie rod because it was a little bit looser than the other one anyways. So now what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna pack this with grease and eventually now the boat is going to push it through. See the spring. Let's see if that's going to work. Maybe I should have put grease on the other side as well. Oh, it started coming out already. I hate grease. Not the country. I love Greece. I love the country. <laughs> Have you been in Greece, guys? Oh my God, so beautiful. I wanted, to, oh, that's nice and tight now. This is nice and tight now, but now I'm afraid that the other side is gonna become too loose if we steal the 150 tau from there. So we might steal it from the tie rod and What's important at the end is the two tie rod ends to be at the same distance as before. You know what I mean? So, I'm gonna tighten this more. Now it's becoming too tight, you know? Okay. I'm just gonna leave it here and we're gonna measure and we will see how much maybe it's we're not gonna steal 150 we're gonna steal less i guess okay so now let's bend these again one in this direction one in the opposite i don't think it's gonna go anywhere Okay, it's perfect now. Okay, let's do let's measure it. 206, let's say 207, so 120 tau. We need to steal 120 tau from somewhere else because we push this 120 tau further in. So that needs to be 120 tau further out or the tie rotend needs to be 120 further out we will see 
So now let's do the other one as well. I just want to clean it inside and pack it with grease. Oops, we need to measure before we do anything. We need to measure, right? So here, actually, I can see my nut is right at the last thread. So I don't need to measure. It is at the last thread. Oh my God. As usual, I just need a bigger hammer, right? <laughs> okay. Why doesn't it move now? Okay, so 19 millimeters works here. There you go. Okay, this time we're gonna fill both sides. Like here. There's not much room there, but the spring. Okay. We can't go looser than that. That's where we need to be. Let's see if that nut in the back is still... Oh my God. Grease. Ah. Okay, so we're just gonna put it where it used to be. And the 120 tau is gonna go somewhere else. And now we can install the boots. And we're gonna start with the one that's harder to install, which is this one, because the problem here is this big knuckle. We have to go over it to get to here with a smaller diameter, with a smaller diameter. But let me take the boots out and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Send you zip ties nowadays and not clamps, but I think that's a better option actually because our clamps were not very good. So this big one is for the other side. We're gonna do that later. This is the one that needs to come here, but this part needs to go over this one. And in the meantime, I wanna pack this with grease, right? So it's not gonna be very easy, easy peasy. So here I used to use a uh, very thin aluminum sheet from a uh, pop can, for example. And I, I used to make a funnel and go over it, but it's pretty tricky. So I'm gonna try something new. Never tried that before, but might work better, I don't know. I wanna pack here with grease. Okay, let's see now. I'm gonna put very little grease here inside so it slides on top of here. I'm sure it's gonna spread all over the place now, but let's see if that's gonna work for me. Oh yeah, so far so good. That's the biggest problem, that it becomes slippery at some point and you can't even push on it anymore. <coughs> okay. Come on, climb on top. Believe me, it's gonna feel better when, when you are on the other side. You're gonna just go down and it's gonna be nice and smooth for you. You're not gonna stay stretched like that, don't worry. You see guys, it's important to talk to it, to calm it down, because otherwise it's scared. It thinks it's gonna remain stretched like that forever. But no, I'm gonna take care of you, don't worry. Okay. 
Come on, baby. A little bit more. We're almost there. Okay, I think it's time to remove this. So we can push forward. Okay. Pull the skin back. <laughs> There you go. We're almost there, baby. Okay. You see? There you go. I told you it's not gonna hurt that much. <sighs> because we lubricated you, right? There you go. Okay. Now you can relax a little bit and become nice and tight again. Any similarities with real people and events is not intended. Okay, it's becoming tighter now. Okay, now we can take a zip tie and tighten it on this side. So what I like to do here is grab a small open wrench, small box wrench and do this. There you go. And since there's no ridge here on the pipe, at the end of the pipe to hold it, I'm just gonna do one more zip tie, one of my own, just in case. It's not gonna hurt. And we have a baby zip tie on the other side. And this one is easier, but it's still tricky because it goes easy over this one, but then it needs to climb here. So I'll show you another trick for here. So first of all, let's pack with grease. Okay, so what helps here is to uh, bring this knuckle all the way there come on because it just keeps it closer because now the bottom for example if I want to put the top end the bottom end goes a little bit higher not that the knuckle is keeping it perfect but you see if it is like that it helps a little not much Okay, I think it went in. Now we have to pull this back without taking it off. No, 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 don't come off. Can't come off. Okay. You stay there. Okay. Whew. All right. That was harder than the other side, actually. All right, so time to install the tie rod ends. And here, first, before we do anything, before we forget, we need to put the lock nut all the way in. Okay, and if you remember, when we took out the old tie rod ends, we counted the number of turns that we did on the threads in order to pull it out. Because the position of the tie rod end on the tie rod it determines the toe on our front wheels. So, unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to do a proper toe alignment. So I have to assume that the car was okay before and we have to put the new tie rod ends at the exact same location as the old ones. The problem here is that the new tie rod ends are obviously a little bit longer than the old ones. I don't know if you can see that difference, but they are significantly longer, which means that if we put it the same amount of threads, which for this side was for the left was 21. So if we do 21 turns here, our bolt is gonna remain a little bit further out than where this one was, you know what I mean? So that's why we need to measure now and determine how much longer the new ends are and um, 
compensate for that with the number of threads here that we're doing. So I don't see a better way to measure this other than assuming that this machined part here is concentric with the boat. So I remove the grease zerg from here and I'm going to measure with my calipers. That's the only way. I mean, as precise as it could be. So this to the center of the grease zerg is 287, maybe 2896. Okay, let's go with 2.9. Let me write it down. 2.900. The new one, the same. I need to assume that this is concentric here. It's machined, so. Yeah, so this, let me make sure we are zeroed here, 3 inch and 45, let's call it 3.05, so 3.05, we need to move this 150 tau further in for both sides, that's actually pretty easy because we know these threads here are half inch 20 TPI and TPI stands for threads per inch, right? So we know that in one inch we have exactly 20 threads. So if we divide one inch by 20 threads, each thread is 50 tau. So we know that one turn equals 50 tau. So this means that here we used to have 21 turns. Now we need to add three more to compensate for the difference between the old and the new tie rod ends. However, there's something important here. Remember, we stole 120 tau here on the knuckle inside, and we traded it in 120 tau more than what it was originally. That also is going to affect the position of our tie rod end at the end here. This means that since we went 120 tau further in, we only need to go in 30 tau. 30 tau is less than one turn. So that's how we're gonna compensate for this side. This is not the case for the other side. For the other side, we're gonna do 150 tau in. So we used to have 21, so it's not gonna be plus three, it's gonna be plus a little bit less than one. So it's gonna be 22. That's as precise as I could do it. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and we can lock this. There you go. And for this side, like I said, it used to be twenty-two, but we need to move it hundred and fifty tau in, so it's going to be twenty-five turns. All right, and. That's it. Our rack is serviced. Now, all we need to do is clean these up. I need to find now, I have new ones of these because these are pretty cracked, pretty crackalacked. See? I should have done that after I found the new ones, right? <laughs> I'm sure I have them. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna install it in the car. All right, so I washed all this in the parts washer, not this, and I found my new bushings. So how these go, they go on the rack with this slip under this plate, and we have the same here. So, so that's how they go. Like this, then this top. And then this plate goes underneath like that and gets tightened. Okay, so we're gonna mount it loosely with this underneath, with the plates underneath and everything, but we're not gonna tighten the nuts. And then I'll show you what we have to do. Something that I was missing before, but I've been told that this needs to be pushed apart when they're mounted on the car and then tightened underneath. So we're gonna have to figure out a way how to do that. But first, let me mount it loosely on the car. <laughs> okay. 
there you go. I employed all my welding clamps. Well, not all, but lots of my welding clamps. So three on this side. I was able to fit only two on that side, but that's fine. And I also had to clamp the clamp to the bar because when it comes down here, it comes loose. So now in this position, I can go underneath and tighten them completely. And then what's left is to install the ends here. The tie rod ends need to go into this link like that. But I'm not going to tighten them yet completely because we're going to, at some point, at a, late, at a later date, we're going to change the springs on the front and uh, we have to, and we have to make a small repair here on the frame and stuff like that. So for this reason, maybe it's a better idea if we leave this loose because, because eventually we're going to remove it again. Like not the whole rack, but the tie rod end. So in this case, I think this is a good spot to end this video. And uh, we're gonna start fresh in the next one. We're gonna start assembling the front end of the engine bay because so far I've been resisting the urge to assemble the radiator and the shroud and everything in the front because I knew that it was gonna be easier with the clamping here and all that stuff with the steering rack. But now that the steering rack is in, we can complete the front end. So that's what's gonna happen in the next video. For now, I want to thank you again for watching, for commenting, for subscribing, for sharing and supporting the channel in any way that you find to support it. Some of you are really creative and I really thank you for that, guys. I appreciate it. So stay tuned for more episodes on the Rusty Beauties. Meanwhile, you can go to the Facebook group called Rusty Beauties and join if you haven't joined yet. And if you like to support the channel a little bit financially, you can um, find details in the description of this video. There's a link to my Patreon page. My email address is there so you can make one-time donations at uh, any amount that you wish. So all that's in the description. But again, that's not necessary. Go away. Find somewhere to be. <laughs> okay. Okay, sit. Good boy. Okay, give me pa. Good boy. Okay, say goodbye to the guys over there. Tell them, you don't need to support the channel financially in order to have access to everything. <laughs> everything is free. The financial support, the financial, su the financial support is only if you feel like it. So thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. <laughs>